Okay, to make a histogram for your project, the first thing you need is a frequency distribution. Now you can see I've got it created here, but I'm going to show you how I do it. So first of all, you're going to highlight your data and you're going to want to sort your data. So in my case, I'm highlighting both because I want to keep the date with it. I don't want to lose that association. So I'm going to go over to find and select, no, sort and filter, over one too far, and I want custom sort and I'm going to select my second column, the one I want to sort, and smallest to largest. So if for any reason I want largest to smallest, I can flip that around. That first I can then tell that my smallest number is 12. I'm choosing to count by 9, so in this case 11 through 20, 21 through 30, and so on. So I actually have a class width of 10 um, and nice even numbers here. What I can do though is now that it's sorted, I can highlight from 12 to 20. So this is what I want in class 1. And down here, count, it tells me there's 10. There's my frequency. I don't even have to hand count these. Then I go and I do the next one through 30. I forgot the first one. There we go. 15 and so on. Then what I usually do is I will, and actually I'm not going to do it this way, I click on these, click on the sum button, and like okay, 57 and then make sure that you actually started with 57. Um, it's a good way to check and make sure you didn't make a mistake is simply add up your frequencies and it should add up to your total n value, how many data points you started with. In this case, since I did two whole months, I actually had 57 data points instead of 50. Um, now, once you have this, and this is your first step, and how wide your classes are up to you, um, you kind of look at your data, decide, okay, what's my biggest number? Look for your range, your biggest number, and your high, you know, your smallest number and your biggest number, and kind of, you know, they're really close together. You're going to want smaller class sizes, um, and you're going to look. But I would say you want about at least five classes. Um, any less is not going to give you a good graph. You probably don't want more than 10. Um, so somewhere in that 5 to 10 range is usually a good suggestion. Now to make your histogram, you're going to highlight your frequency distribution. Okay, so highlight the whole thing, go to insert, and then you're going to go up here to bar graphs. And this is going to create this. Now if you click on this gap width, I can make this zero and it looks like a true histogram. Uh, it's nothing I dock you as, but it's nice to be able to make it look all pretty. You're going to want to give yourself an actual title. So in my case, max temps for November, October, November 2012. Then see this little plus button here. You want to come up to this little plus button and you want to add axis titles. Okay, so I want to have a vertical and horizontal. Oh, come back over here. I don't know why it did that. Anyways, highlight it. And so, for instance, this is my temperatures. This over here is my frequency. And you can label them. And then you've got a nicely labeled histogram for use. And uh, you can then, from this, uh, it said if you didn't want the gap, you, you know, you want the gap. That's okay. I'm not going to, you know, nitpick if you want it there. But you can decide what you want to do there. Um, but that is the way to get that true histogram look if you're looking for it.